we're going to take a look at the technique we used when we were graphing, known as completing the square, and see how we could use it to solve quadratic equations. So to get you warmed up and thinking about how this could work, the goal is going to be the same when we do this, and that's to isolate the x squared term. So in this first equation, it's not going to work because I've got x squared plus 35. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the 35 to the other side. By doing this, now I can take the square root of both sides. Now the only thing you have to watch for is I can use both the positive and the negative answer. Because x is being squared, that means I'm going to be able to use the negative and I would get the positive answer back. For example, negative 4 times negative 4 is also positive 16. Same as 4 times 4 is 16. So in this case, x is both the positive and negative version of our answer, which is 4. So same technique, I have to isolate the x squared, and it's going to be 2x squared equals 50, so x squared is equal to 25. Now that it's isolated, I can take the square root of both sides, and x will be plus or minus root 25, so x is plus or minus 5. This time, it's already isolated, because the thing that I'm squaring here it's already isolated. There's nothing else multiplied or added to it. So if I can take the square root just right here, I'd have x plus 3 equals square root 81. Now the same rules apply. We can still use the positive or negative of that. So when I go to solve this, x plus 3 is going to be equal to plus or minus 9. So to gather my like terms, x is going to be equal to negative 3 plus or minus 9. So what would that look like? negative 3 plus 9, that's 6. Negative 3 minus 9, that's negative 12. So x is equal to negative 12 or 6. So the same rules will apply as I move this. I'm going to have 2x plus 1 squared equals 49. Remember, this is the piece that's being squared. That's what I need to isolate. It's all by itself now, so I'll square root both sides. 2x plus 1 is going to be equal to 49. And again, writing in a different color here just to remind you, you don't want to forget that plus or minus root 49. So here I have um, 2x will be equal to negative 1 plus or minus 7. And x is negative 1 plus or minus 7 over 2. So if I wanted to then simplify this a little bit, negative 1 plus 7, that's going to be 6. Negative 1 minus 7 is going to be negative 8. So I'd have 6 over 2, or negative 8 over 2. So final answers here then would be x equals 3, or negative 4. So before when we were factoring, we, we had these nice numbers, but now we don't have nice numbers anymore to solve these equations. But we can do it by completing the square. So let's try here. So divide by 2, I get 3 squared gives me 9. So I have to subtract the 9 that I just added. So I'm going to have x minus 3, all squared minus 36 equals 0. So that means I'm going to get x minus 3 squared is 36. I'll take the square root of both sides. And I'll have x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus root 36. So x is equal to 3 plus or minus 6. Or I could call that 3 plus 6 is 9. 9 and negative 3. So that's how we can use completing the square to solve a quadratic equation as well. Let's try over here and see what we have. So x squared um, plus 8x. If I complete the square, divide by 2, and I'll get 4. 4 squared is 16. But I have to subtract the same 16 in order to balance my equation. So this will be x plus 4, all squared, um, minus 5 equals to 0. 
And then I can remove the uh, 5, put it on the other side. Square root both sides. And this is the values that I get. So x is negative 4 plus root 5 and negative 4 minus root 5. This is not the kind of equation that you'd be able to solve by factoring. Um, I suppose you could technically factor it, but you're going to get these really terrible factors with square root of 5 in it. So we do need a technique that goes beyond factoring in order to solve quadratic equations. So as we encounter more complicated quadratic equations, the only difference that we have is it's more complicated completing the square. So in this instance, the advice that I had given you previously was to factor out your common factor here. So 14 divided by 2 is 7. 7 squared is 49. But I have to subtract the, what I've just added. And what I've added is 5 times 49. So I'm going to subtract 5 times 49. So if I try to collect up like terms here, I would end up with this equation now. And I can start solving like we did previously as we were warming up to this. Just trying to isolate what's being squared. So x plus 7 squared is equal to 1. Now I can take the square root of both sides. So x plus 7 is going to be plus or minus root 1, which of course is just 1. So x is equal to negative 7 plus or minus 1. So that's negative 8 or negative 6. Okay, so we have one more that we'll try here, and again, we're completing the square. So we'll factor out that 2. And if I divide that in half, I'm going to get 5. 5 squared is 25. So there's my perfect square. But now that I've added in 5 here, I'm going to need to subtract 2 times 25. So remember, it's not just 25 that I added. It's twice that. So I can make this now 2 times x minus 5 squared. And we end up with um, this expression, which now we're ready to, com uh, to solve. So this would be 2 times x minus 5 squared is 19. x minus 5 squared is 19 over 2. So x minus 5 is plus or minus root 19 over 2. So there's my two possible solutions, which again um, wouldn't be a, a good idea to try factoring. It gives us another technique now that we're able to use when we're trying to solve these equations.